Welcome back. Last time we considered the symbolism of the numbers 2 and 3, and this time we want to consider the implications of this qualitative, not just quantitative, understanding of numbers for the liberal arts. Now, mathematics in Arabic is called riyadiyat. This word can also mean asceticism, or it can mean sports, and all kinds of things like that. Discipline, training. So why is mathematics called this? The answer is that this is the Pythagorean understanding of the role of mathematics in the training of the mind. It's a propedeutic science, in the same way that sports trains the body, and riyadha, which means asceticism, trains the will. According to traditional Islamic teachings, mathematics trains the mind. And this is a kind of Pythagorean remnant in the Islamic classification of the sciences. We need to understand both the qualitative and quantitative aspect of numbers in arithmetic to understand the qualitative aspect of numbers in space, which we see in geometric figures, and the qualitative aspect of numbers in time, which we hear in music, both of which we can experience in astronomy as number in space and time. These were the four parts of what was called the quadrivium, the four ways of illuminating the intellect. But number is not simply a quantity. It always has two faces, one quantitative and the other qualitative. Of course, Pythagoras came out with the idea that mathematics is the key to the understanding of all things. But this was not the beginning of the quantification of science, as everybody says, because mathematical number is not pure quantity. Now, if numbers have a qualitative meaning in themselves, then number in space as geometric figures also have a qualitative meaning. For example, since 3 symbolizes a return to unity in multiplicity, as we previously discussed, the triangle symbolizes harmony. This is reflected in a balanced path between extremes in periodic phenomena, such as a swinging pendulum. Similarly, a square has four corners and four sides, and because its corners point in the four directions, a square is a symbol of the stability on earth, in comparison with a circle, which refers to the heavens. This qualitative dimension of number in space is the basis of sacred geometry. And the qualitative experience of number in time is the basis of sacred music which is the ratio of small whole numbers. For example, if we pluck a monochord, let's say we get the note C. If we cut the chord in half, we get the same note C, but an octave higher. If we double the length, we get the same note C, but an octave lower. All notes are the ratios of small whole numbers. And when we do not have the ratio of small whole numbers, we no longer get notes that are recognizable by the ear as notes. Supposing you have a blackboard and I run a nail along it. It makes a sound, but one that makes your hair stand up immediately. Or think of the sound of a jet taking off. That's a sound system. What's the difference between the sound system of the jet, which is very loud and sudden, and the Berlin Philharmonic beginning to play Beethoven's Fifth Symphony? which is also very loud. If you analyze it, you'll find that those sounds coming out of the Berlin Philharmonic give you the ratio of small whole numbers, whereas the jet does not. That's the difference. Individual musical notes carry a qualitative meaning we can hear and are like letters we use to write. Both are vehicles that are able to carry a meaning. God has given them this power. From this perspective, music has the power to free the soul. This is the deepest meaning of what music really is. This understanding of music as a way of freedom is possible because it deals with the basic harmony of existence. It's that which enables one to understand the harmony of things and for the soul to go back to its original harmony as God created it. We have fallen all out of tune, you might say. All spiritual life is really a tuning of the string of our life. And these ratios are also the key for understanding why, for example, 
medieval mosques and cathedrals had such great acoustics. They didn't need any modern sound systems. In any great mosque, the sound reverberated, and you could hear the sermon or khutbah on Fridays. The same applied when the Qur'an was chanted. Where did these acoustics come from? The harmonic proportions of the space of the mosque. Mosques and cathedrals are therefore frozen music, so to speak. And so this art can help return our souls to God as well. It's remarkable that the musical notes, the optimal acoustics, the most beautiful designs, even the optimal structural stability of the domes, all of these are based on the same proportions. They're isomorphic. That's Tawheed. The fact that all of these different orders of reality are interconnected illustrates they come from the same source. Now, we've all heard of getting a good liberal arts education. But what does liberal arts mean? Why arts and what's liberal about them? It's true that most professors of liberal arts vote democratic, but that has nothing to do with the word liberal. This goes back originally to a way of training the mind and the soul, preparing a person for higher orders of knowledge to liberate the soul. Hence the term liberal arts. This Pythagorean and Platonic division of learning became foundational in medieval universities, both through Roman as well as Islamic models. So you have altogether the seven liberal arts, three for the expression of the intellect in terms of grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and the four sciences we just discussed. That's why Plato stated that everyone in the Republic had to study mathematics, especially the philosopher king. But this wasn't secular mathematics that reduces quality to quantity, but a sacred mathematics to liberate our souls through knowledge. Islamic science therefore embraced this qualitative framework as the basis on which to create sacred sciences that were integrated around a sacred center consistent with Tawheed to find God in all things. That concludes our introduction to the true meaning of the liberal arts, and now we turn to a more detailed discussion of astronomy for understanding the cosmos as Ayatollah.